So I'm on the line with Jose Villa, and since the brand new part two interview of him that you're about to hear was recorded before the coronavirus hit, we wanted to get on the line today to talk about it for a bit, and then we'll go into the regular show, which is incredible. The, the interview is really great. Um, so, Jose, what is it that that you're uh, – first of all, what are you just personally feeling about this? What's your overall attitude about this whole issue of the of this potential pandemic that's just starting in the States? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, it's we're taking it day by day. I mean, I think every day there's – you know, news about the CDC, you know, updating travel, you know, restrictions and such group gatherings and all that just recently, you know, to avoid that kind of stuff. So I think we're taking it day by day. You know, my clients are, everyone's on edge. Let's just, you know, and be honest that everyone is absolutely on edge. Um, I think at the beginning, when this first thing sort of started to hit the media, we weren't really taking it serious. Now we're at a point that we are pretty serious. And the reason I say that is because we've had a number of uh, postponed, I don't want to say cancellations right now, because they're not necessarily cancellations, but they're being postponed, these events. So, you know, some are very recent as to two, you know, two, two weeks uh, from today, actually, we were leaving to Israel. And now, now that's not happening. So I'm trying to, you know, keep positive and make sure that my clients know that we're here, that we're ready, that we're, you know, we, we are um, supporting them in anything that they need and not to add to their stress by uh, being difficult to work with because that's just not how that's not how I work. Yeah, I agree. I think for us to be calm and understanding is really important because everybody, I mean, look, we're all scared. We're all scared, feeling really raw and vulnerable. So yeah, I think to put off more of a, of a calm demeanor is only going to help our relationship with our clients. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So are you getting any uh, just flat out cancellations or so far just postponements? So far, just postponements. I've got one wedding in July uh, in Italy, and that's just on hold currently. So they're not really making any financial decisions at this point. I literally just sent my contract before this whole thing hit and I have not received it back. I probably will not until this sort of starts to die down a little bit. I talked about the Israel bar mitzvah. Well, it's a bar mitzvah, but the Israel job I talked about um, is a five-day bar mitzvah that I was really looking forward to. And that has also postponed to July or possibly August. And then just yesterday, I got another postponement for a wedding I was doing in April, this time in Los Angeles, but the couple is from Indonesia. And uh, I believe today I just talked to uh, or got an email from one of my, uh, that, that client actually, and their wedding planner that they are now putting restrictions on travel for Indonesia. And it sounds like they might even do a lockdown there as well. So, you know, it's day by day and it's, and it's so, it's hitting so many different parts of the world, obviously, but like different clients, even in the U S like, even though the U S doesn't really have as many cases as places like Italy or China or whatnot. Um, I think it's coming. I think, you know, it's, it's going to hit and people are getting really nervous about making any decisions within the next 30 days, at least. Well, what happens if there's a postponement that basically changes to a date that you're not available on. And what goes along with that as well is if there's a cancellation, kind of same difference. So whether there's a cancellation or they postpone it to a date you're not available, how are you intending to handle that deposit? You know, that's a really difficult question. One that I've talked to actually a numerous uh, amount of wedding planners, friends of mine that we can be super open about, uh, I've talked to clients about this to see how they feel. You know, the bottom line is we do take a retainer uh, and that, and we do call it a retainer. It's not a deposit. The retainer is 50%. That's how I like to work. And then the rest 50% isn't due till two weeks before the event. In this particular case, it's so difficult to say, and I want to be fair. I'm a very fair person, but at the same time, I have to run my business. And I did uh, put other weddings, uh, or I should say, I did put this particular, you know, dates on hold for these clients. So I didn't take any other jobs on. I guess I just show my loyalty to my clients and hope that they're okay. I mean, at this point, we are not giving retainers back. At this point, it is just, you know, let's hold and see what happens in the next two to 30, two weeks to 30 days. Um, and then I guess we'll revisit it. But at this point, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that 
my dates are flexible. The good news for me, and I, I mean, I maybe I'm spoiled in this case, but a lot of my clients are very, they're still calm, these three, but they're very much willing to work with my schedule and work around my schedule. Uh, and I think that sort of sucks, I guess, for all the other event, uh, you know, the event planner or the other vendors involved. I think, you know, some people are just not going to get those jobs. And I'm hoping that, you know, they, they put me as a priority is what I'm saying as the photographer. So I think I have a little bit more of like that edge, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, because these people do, they, they admire photography so much that they're okay letting go of a hair and makeup person to get somebody else if they can't yeah. do it, you know? So I'm, I guess, fortunate in that way, but also feel terrible for other folks involved. Well, you know, I want to come back and address the whole issue of of the deposit or the retainer, which is like a deposit. I believe, Jose, that we should not be responsible for bearing 100% of the brunt of this. You know, whether it's quote unquote an act of God or whatever it is, it's completely out of our control. So my feeling is that we should share with the client the responsibility. In other words, I'm not planning on giving back any deposits, but I'm obviously not going to expect the balance due. I'm hoping that they can postpone to an open date. Um, but if they can't, if that doesn't happen, you know, I'm going to keep the deposit. I, I think it's only fair. And I was speaking to, uh, I put out a kind of an emergency episode a week ago, Friday the 6th, with Lynn Easton, we talked briefly about it, and she was saying she had talked to Todd, Todd Fiscus, Marcy Bloom, uh, David Beam, a few other people, and the general consensus was that we would keep the deposits. Again, we would share the burden. I absolutely agree with that. I'm on the same boat. You know, I really do feel that things are going to start to get a little bit tricky if more of these events start to postpone. Mm hmm I think 2021 is gonna gonna fill up really fast. Um, you know, I've I've had two or two of the three have already asked me for 2021 dates. I'm almost seeing 2021 fill up. But yeah, you're right. To answer your question, I I agree. I feel like we ne definitely need to share that burden. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, it's obviously frustrating. One thing that hasn't really been talked about, we don't have a choice, is that when these events are postponed and they take place on a date where we may have gotten a new job, especially if it's still the fall, the winter, next year, 2021, we're kind of losing twice over and, or be, because we would have had some other job that time. And I, I guess that's something we all in the industry are just going to have to face and not going to be as profitable as we were. But hopefully, hopefully at a minimum, we still, we do get those dates filled. Yeah, I mean that's that's absolutely what we're what we're aiming for as well. I mean, I've had I have one client that's willing to even just do their wedding on a weekday. Oh, yeah. You know, as as well, you know. So, yeah, I, you know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully things within the next 30 days will calm down a little bit and we'll go we'll know more. You know, I think like I said, day by day, it's I change my tune here and there. Today I say this, tomorrow I say I say yeah. that because of what's happening. Look, we're all on this roller coaster. So w what about conversations with your staff? What kind of conversations are you having? How are you approaching that? We had a conversation about this yesterday. And I think there's a little bit of, uh, there's that fear too, that maybe if we do come to the point where we have to quarantine here in the US, we talked about, you know, them, my staff taking computers home and working from home and retouching and editing and things from home, which is actually, we're very lucky that they can do that. And I'm okay with that. We have plenty of work, thankfully, from, you know, even 2019 that we're still sort of catching up on a, a handful of events from the earlier part of this year that we're working on. So there's, there's plenty of work. There's some, you know, there's, there's good funds there to be able to pay them for a certain amount of time. So I'm totally okay having them go and work at home for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that's really important. I mean, we all have got to stay safe and we don't want to, you know, as business owners, we don't want to get in a compromised position of insisting anyone come to an office if they're not comfortable. I don't think we're able to do that. You know, also, there was a blog, um, it was put out recently by Sean Lowe, Business of Being Creative. He was talking about how, again, as small business entrepreneurs, uh, we don't know you know, how deep this is going to go, how, how much it's going to affect us. But he was suggesting we look right now at, uh, at cutting expenses, you know, taking a look at now getting leaner 
as opposed to waiting since we just don't know where this is going to go, but there's bound with the market down. Hopefully it'll jump back up. Mm -hmm. And and that's another thing I want to point out. This isn't to everybody. This is not anything like the 2008 recession. It isn't based on a financial issue. It is complete. It's really purely emotional. Although yes, business is starting to be affected, the economy, but it's very different. So we really, I don't want to get all flipped out like it's going to be as bad as the 2008 recession. But as far as starting to look at expenses, have you even thought about that? Are you even there at this point? Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. You know, on a personal level, I was uh, doing some renovations and such, and we put all that to to, like literally at a screeching halt. Um, We're not doing anything um, with our personal, you know, expenditures with you know, furniture and things like that. We just got a new place. We're super excited. At this point, it's all stopping. Mm. As far as my business goes, um, you know, at this point, we're okay. I mean, I still have to, I don't advertise as much. So I'm not worried about that. The main thing that I have is expenses as a photographer, a film photographer is just literally film that we process for our clients. So obviously, we're still, you know, we're, we're moving forward with all that. I don't worry too much with the business. But personally, yes, absolutely. It's that's where I'm really watching it. Yeah, I'm taking a look at uh, both personal and business expenses. I think we got to get ahead of it. And, you know, we should always stay lean. Although, you know, myself, a lot of people I know, there's still more room <laughs> to become more lean. And I think now is the time. Absolutely. Let's get ahead of it and, and re-eval- reevaluate how we spend our money, what investments we're making. Like you say, maybe holding off on some maybe adjusting some others. I think it, I think now's the time to be careful before it really hits. Yeah. And, you know, this is really interesting because, you know, we've been sort of in this industry riding this wave and everyone's just been thriving, at least from what I, you know, gather a lot of my friends have been doing such amazing, you know, work, but also being pretty successful financially. It's almost like a, it's a reminder, you know, that, that yeah. things can go south very quickly and that we shouldn't take things for granted you know, and that sort of, uh, I'm sort of reminded of that because it's sort of, I guess over the last four or five years, I've never really sort of had to think about, you know, worrying for something like this. But now that it's here, it's, you, you really sort of sit back and go, wow, things can change quickly. And it is really scary how fast, you know, things can go south. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that moving forward, and it should have been like this all along, but I think it's really important for all of us that we always stay as lean, even when times are really good, you know, try to set aside a nest egg, not only personally, but for the business as well. And, and I think that would be a good habit to get into if, if, if some of us are not there yet, is running lean all the time, even when things are going well, stay lean. And, and just one last thing, too, I want to say is that I think it's really important that we all stay calm. I mean, I have moments, you know, I don't know about you, Jose, I have moments where um, I'll get, I'll feel really scared. And then I stop myself and I say, we don't know how bad this is going to get. We don't know the extent of it. And so th- it's, it's out of our control. There's nothing we can do by being super anxious and scared. And I would say that if anything, if we can somehow be somewhat stoic about it, stay calm, we're going to be in a better position to make the right decisions. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And I think one of the things too that um, maybe we should practice during this time in this industry, really, that we have these clients that we're dealing with that are panicking as well is to just reach out to them. You know, I've been reaching out to oh, great idea, you know, these clients, these these ones, not all of them this year, because I don't, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in July and August, September. But, you know, the, the next few clients that I have, I'm reaching out, hey, how's it going? I'm here to chat. Let's, you know, is everything good? How, you know, where are you guys at? You know, so sort of reading the temperature with them to see how they are, but also letting them know that I'm not scared, you know, that even though I really am, I don't want to, you know, press that alarm in front of them, but definitely just saying, hey, I'm here. That's a great idea. Yeah. Is there anything we can talk about, you know, and uh, instead of hiding from the situation, which is at first what I really wanted to do. (laughs) That's right. I know. Is to to just literally hide and uh, not let anybody, you know, in, but, but I've realized that that's not the, that's not the thing to do here. So. If you can reach out and just connect with your client and just say, hey, I'm here to back you up, to help you in any way, let's talk about it. I think that helps. What a great idea. Yeah, and I think that that gets ahead of any potential tension between us, you know, in in the event business, the industry people and the clients. I think that's a great idea. 
Well, Jose, I appreciate you doing this very much. Thanks for getting on the line last minute. I think people will appreciate this. Of course. And now for everyone listening, we're going to move on to the regular show with the regular introduction and everything to hear an incredible new interview of Jose Villa. Thanks, Jose. Thank you. Hey, everybody, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons of the weddings and event industry. And this is all to provide you with education and inspiration, which I hope leads to a better sense of empowerment. So I'm feeling, well, I'm feeling empowered. I'm feeling great because just last week I was in Las Vegas where I presented two different presentations for special events, leveraging podcasts for your business as a marketing and educational tool, and also conversation with the stars, takeaways from interviewing the icons of the business. And I really love speaking. So please contact me if you need any help with your organization's chapter meetings or conference. You could reach me at Andy at The Wedding Biz. I've got several presentations. I also put together custom ones based on the needs of the meeting. So I want to mention last week's episode. If you missed, it was Sonal Shaw, a premier South Asian event planner based in New York City, planning elaborate over-the-top weddings worldwide. And she deals with both Hollywood and Bollywood celebrities amongst her other clients. Really wonderful conversation. So now, today's guest is celebrity photographer Jose Villa. And just a few weeks ago, I re-released part one that was absolutely wonderful, where we really dug into Jose's process and so much more. If you missed part one, you got to go back and check it out. So today's release is a brand new interview of Jose. I'm calling it part two, uh, recorded just a few months ago. And we get into so many more topics, including the celebrity weddings that he shot last year in 2019. And there is so much to learn and be inspired by with Jose, regardless of whether or not you're a photographer. And for those of you who are photographers, you're in for an extra special treat. So enjoy my conversation with Jose Villa. Jose, it is so funny because the first time I interviewed you was, we were saying like a year and a half, two years ago, yep. and it was at Nizuk engage and yeah. it was like right before i was going to jump on the plane we're in the yeah. same boat <laughs> but yeah. i'm but i'm so glad to have you here in person so you know in the past couple of years since i interviewed you i mean you were already kicking ass but it it feels like you've gone to yet another level do you feel uh -huh. that way yeah i do actually yeah especially over the last year about year and a half or so yeah, yeah it's it's just the types of weddings i think that we're shooting we're now in that sort of caliber of, you know, the high society and high profile celebrity weddings, um, which I hadn't done. Like I had done some, but yeah. now we're like on a different level. It's, it's, crazy. it's another play. What does that feel like for you just overall? Um, you know, I don't know that it feels any different. Yeah. Cause you're a real humble guy. I, I mean, I, that's how I grew up, you know, that's, yeah. I, I can't, uh, I can't be any, any different, but um, it just, you know, it just feels like, Hey, I just another gig, but yeah. you know, maybe I have a little bit more uh, butterflies or anxiety as I'm going through it. Do just you, because do you feel anxiety still? Oh yeah, I mean, I think for sure. I'm, I actually feel like I've gotten more anxiety oh, um, really? with these types of they're more high profile, high maybe? profile delivering. Literally that night, you know, the clients are standing behind you and selecting images like <laughs> at, at the after party. At the, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's, I didn't know that they're involved. I figured oh, maybe yeah. you give them a little sample, just, you know, hold them over. You know, I guess it depends. Every client's a little different and every deliverable is a little different. Yeah. But, you know, we've had to deliver images, I mean, literally three, four hours after the after party, you know, and we're still shooting, but the client, we sneak away with the client in the back green yeah. room or whatever. And they're like going through photos. So, so that's the pressure super high. <laughs> they're standing behind you and they're like, you know, telling you, okay, I hate this or I love this or I hate this. And you have to just take it and, you know, do the best you possibly can. And mm -hmm. they'll tell you things like, oh, can you edit, you know, this out or can you retouch this? I, I can't imagine at my own wedding, like dealing with that at the end of it, but I guess they're that excited. Well, that, and then also some of these people are getting a ton of oh, money publicity. for the publicity. Yes, they've sold. Mm. Yeah. So they've signed contracts Yeah, and they've sold their, their photos, my photos. Um, and then, you know, of course they have to complete with that. So it's part of, I guess, part of the 
part of the job, part of the part of the deal here. Does that give you any more sense of pressure? I mean, you already have pressure, but does that add any more that you know they've sold them and it's going to be on the whatever and people or whatever yeah. it is? You know? Yeah, um, it it does. I mean, it definitely for sure does. And I think that's why, like, you know, I've gotten a lot more of this like an- anxiousness, you know, because we've got to <laughs> deliver, you know, so fast. Yeah. So for sure, absolutely. And then the magazines are like texting us calling us how's it going hey did you get this picture like because they give us a list of images they need oh and so i'm like ah let me just do what i do like I, you know I'm, let me just be that artist why do i have to go down this list and like make sure that i got this 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 and this for the magazine you know so that part of it kind of sucks which is an extension essentially of their brand in a sense isn't it so you're having to mm-hmm. it, it's kind of a lot deeper right yeah. it's interesting yeah i mean i've learned a lot like i said over the last year with these high, high you know these uh, celebrity weddings but it's awesome it's awesome I mean, it's a yeah. whole new thing. It's exciting. Yeah. And I just, uh, I don't know. I, I I mean, I've been doing this for 18 years and I feel like that's maybe, you know, it's just, I think naturally going to happen. Well, you know what, while we're there, let's, I mean, let's get into a, a little bit of that. I know that you shot, um, uh, well, you, you shot a couple, but I'm, I'm thinking two in particular, uh, you shot many, but I'm thinking two, mm-hmm. uh, Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra in terms of your process with, with them, Nick and Priyanka, what was that like? You know, it's interesting. I actually booked this wedding two weeks before. Their what? Wedding. Just yeah. two weeks? Just two weeks. Oh, yeah. and, and that big of a wedding, you oh, like yeah. get this call? Uh-huh. And Thank the, God you were available. Well. Or the, you made yourself. <laughs> well, yeah. I actually had another wedding. Yeah. Um, I had another wedding in South Carolina that I had to get myself out of. Huh. Um, and that's like a whole nother story. But it is really interesting. It's not, I normally don't do that kind of thing to get yeah. myself out of a contract like that. But you know, this was, this was definitely going to change like a, a little bit oh, yeah, for, you. for yeah. me. And so I approached it very gently and very, you know, humbly and very, I think, smoothly, mm. um, got an awesome lawyer, got their lawyers involved. And they also understood that they needed to pay for the, for another replacement photographer for the other wedding. Plus, obviously I gave my money back because I was already paid. Yeah. Because uh, it was just two weeks, you know, uh, and it, the wedding was happening in two weeks. And so then I was asking for a certain fee for the job mm-hmm. to do the Jonas wedding. And so, uh, you know, the price tag was pretty high, but they decided yeah. they still wanted it. And I got a, on on the phone with with Nick Jonas and he, uh, I had to let him know exactly what was happening because I was just in touch with his PR people. Oh, interesting. And I wanted to make sure he knew that yeah. I was, had another wedding and it wasn't like lost in the whole process. And so that was something that I needed to make sure that he knew exactly what was happening. So, you know, it's interesting. I know a fair amount about Nick Jonas because my daughter was a Jonas brother freak, <laughs> you know, met them and, and we, you know, I took her because of my connections to yeah. the studio where they recorded, I mean, and all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know, I mean, that kid is like, like, uh, I, I don't know. He was a prodigy, you know, that what his attention to detail, did yeah. he also apply that to the photography? And I, I mean, not that he's going to tell you what to do, but yeah. did he come to you with certain parameters that he was thinking about? You know, I think he really trusted what I had to offer. And I think he, and, and it's funny you say that cause that's exactly who he is. Yeah. And I didn't know that, uh, until I met him. Uh, the day, I think the day before his first celebration, there was four or five days. And so he is very meticulous and he is very uh, detail oriented. He didn't really tell me exactly what he wanted me to do. Um, But it was just like in the visual, like just visually what was happening. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even how he looked. And there were a couple moments uh, throughout the week when he would stop me and say, Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like my cuff is not perfect. See, now that's interesting. I know his focus on detail with mm-hmm. the music and the visuals because those shows are, are insane. But yeah. For him to even be thinking about the cuffs, that's really uh-huh. interesting. Uh-huh. It was tiny. I mean, it was the small little, the small things that I would overlook and then I could even retouch, you know, because I'm thinking I don't want to stop the moment. Yeah, right. But he wants to be in that moment feeling good and being, you know, however it is that he wants to, to be, be, be or seen or viewed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that was really, that was interesting, but I do love, I, I really loved him and I really loved his family. Mm-hmm. They're very, very good people. Very respectful. Um, just, just super, super like honest, good people. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I didn't know really much about her actually didn't really, to be honest about with Priyanka? you. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't really know, actually didn't even know who she was to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, so I actually Googled her and I found out that she's actually bigger worldwide. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, because of the India connection and stuff, but it was, it was really awesome photographing her because 
and I know I'm going off a little tangent here, but she's so aware yeah. of what's happening around. Like these people just know. In, in what the, sense? You're um, saying, for example, uh, you know, she knows that something is about to happen, or she mm -hmm. knows that she feels really good, or she looks really good, and yeah. she knows that there's a mirror in front of her, and she wants to know, hey, or is someone getting this picture? That's interesting. You know, and so I was in in one situation. She was in a really kind of funky dark room, uh, doing hair and makeup, and no one was in the room, no photographer, me or any of my team members were yeah. there. And I was just sort of around the corner and she saw a moment and she, and she yelled for my name. She was like, where's Jose? You know, <laughs> a little bit kind of demand, you know, demanding, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, got my attention, ran over there and it ended up actually being my, one of my favorite photos from the wedding. Wow. That is so interesting at that yeah. level. I mean, that's a whole nother discussion is the, the celebrity level for themselves mm -hmm. and what goes into it. I think we in the public are not I mean, we know they're, you know, they're deeply involved in all aspects of their career, but not to this degree. It's interesting yeah. for you to live it and like see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great for me too, just to, to photograph something like that because they're so aware. It actually makes my job easier. Yeah. You're getting better, better images, yeah. better moments possibly. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have gotten that photo, you know, of her looking in the mirror and she was literally like unveiling herself with this beautiful red material. And I got in there and she saw that moment and she wanted me in there. Wow. So it was, it was, it was great. It was a super cool experience. So what were the results? I mean, you know, other than the obvious, I mean, what was that like for you? Well, I don't know if you know, but I actually am more of a film photographer. Yeah, I do. Oh, I listen, everyone yeah. should be listening to part one because <laughs> we got deep yeah. into that. Yeah. 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 So I, and we can talk about this a little later, but we came up with these digital, uh, or there are film emulating presets that uh -huh. digital photographers can use on their digital images to emulate, of course, the look of film. Yes. My look, you know? So that was actually, the funny thing is that that was the very first wedding that I had ever photographed that was 100% digital. Uh, the first one? The first Who was wedding, that? yeah. That one? Yeah, and, and, and then adding <laughs> to the pressures of, you know, um, photographing this couple. But why? Because of the necessity of the, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because of the publication. And you know what? It wasn't, it was a challenge. And I actually, I always accept challenges. I think I grow from those, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I was comfortable, though, knowing that we had literally had just released this preset three weeks before the wedding. So it was almost like meant to be. It was almost like, huh. because, you know, again, I booked this wedding two weeks before. So we had already planned to have this preset out in a year. And it just came out, happened to just come out right before the wedding. And we applied these presets for the first time yeah. on, a, on a full digital wedding uh, because of the deliverables for People Magazine, OK Magazine, and all these other press outlets. Yeah, and in the show notes, you know, for the photographers out there, I want to have links to this to, mm -hmm. to be able to get your presets. What What about Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin? Now, I mean, Justin, it's interesting just to say my take on it. You know, I saw all the crazy news and everything, yeah. and then I finally, <laughs> I wasn't really interested in him. And then yeah. one day, I had heard about the documentary, you know, of him when he was like younger. And oh, yeah. It blew me away. I did not realize how the the other aspect of him, how much he is aware. I'm sure, like Nick, yeah, very aware, and yeah. what he went through, and his creative, like his his creativity yeah. is crazy. So, what it was really that is. like? What was he like? First of all, so first I want to say too, for this wedding, I booked that a week and a half out. Come on, so same sort of deal. <laughs> Just like same uh, sort did of you have deal. another wedding also? Uh, I did not because the wedding was on a Monday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So it actually, yeah, I know exactly. I didn't want to go through that whole process again, but. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely different. It was a different vibe. And I'll tell you why. Because I was brought in as an additional photographer to someone, th to another photographer team that was already there. Uh -huh. The bride is, as you may know, she's a model and obviously oh, is yeah. a public eye and all that with her parents and things. But she has a really good friend of hers who's a fashion photographer, completely different style than mine that she had hired you know, months prior. Because okay. they already knew they were getting married on this Monday and all that stuff. So Mindy Weiss who I know you know, sure. she uh, she knew, and of course we're friends and I've worked with her many times, mm -hmm. and she knew that of course that I was able to handle you know, a very similar s scenario from yeah. the Jonas experience. And so she said, hey, uh, I have this... Um, I have this client and I want to see if you're, if you're wanting to do this, it's super last minute. It's not going to pay that well. Ugh. Um, but you know what? That's okay. Like, um, and I told her this, I said, it's okay, but what are we going to get out of it? Are we going to get a cover? What's going to happen? Yeah, here? really. You got to get something. Got to get something. Yeah. 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 And she said, Oh, well, we're going to promise, or I promise. And they promise that we're, you know, you're going to have some images out there. It was a little complicated because mm. of having the other photographer there. Um, you know, it, 
too many chefs in the kitchen in yeah. certain scenarios. I wanted to keep my distance, but I also felt like I needed to get my images for possible publication. Sure. Um, so it was definitely a different dynamic overall. I didn't feel like I connected as much with the couple. Oh, yeah. Um, it, I mean, I, I got a chance, to obviously, to, to meet them and to talk to them, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like it was for Jonas. Mm. Um, and that was that's totally cool. Like, I, I'm cool with that, and I learned from those situations, and it was it was awesome. It was still... And it still actually um, is one of my favorite entertaining uh, uh, slash receptions I think I've ever been to. Why? Well, because, you know, the Kardashians were there. Oh. All these really oh, high geez. profile people were there. He yeah. had amazing entertainment. Um, you know, all these very big people. I'll bet. Uh, yeah, uh, Dan and Shay. I mean, I can tell you a list. The list are probably, you can probably Google it faster, but, <laughs> and find out who was there. Mm -hmm. But Usher was there and he sang and it was so cool. Like yeah. just everyone was there was such a good vibe i think at this wedding at the reception hmm. um and i really enjoyed that because i really felt like i was just like photographing a concert every 10 seconds what a blast so you were you were able to photograph everybody that oh, was yeah. performing yeah, yeah. He, he even jumped up on there and was you know on the drums and uh, justin and uh and it was really cool like i got up there on stage and i was literally you know photographing every little moment it, it was very entertaining it was very fun it, you know honestly i think it was like a like a five-hour reception, it really only felt like 30 minutes for me. It was that fun. It was so fun. Yeah. yeah. Tons of photos. I mean, overwhelming amount. We're still going through those photos. <laughs> so, are there anything that you can talk about that's on the books, high celebrity level, that's um, come since then? I can't talk about those, but there are... But um, there's some. Yeah. All right. A, so, we'll be reading about them. Yeah. <laughs> hearing about them. Yeah. Maybe we can have another conversation next year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen. No, definitely, man. I would love it. Well, I want to go also deeper into your process and the creativity behind what you do and i'd love to hear you talk about uh framing and composition you know how do you feel about those two elements yeah you know i normally how do i put this i normally sort of see the world when i'm photographing vertically and vertically it's weird it's like i go into a into a room and i like literally just see vertical but i've learned to over the last couple of years more more so a couple of years to, to photograph and frame horizontally because there's so much you can fit into the frame yeah which i really have been enjoying photographing more moments photographing with a uh, horizontal perspective okay because really you know when you when i'm photographing vertical it's all really going to be great for like detail shots or you know close-ups of design you know for publication because you know of course the magazine is is vertical yeah it's not necessarily horizontal so sometimes i have to remember uh, -huh. uh that my composition needs to be more horizontal in some cases. And a lot of that is sometimes I forget that there's people at this wedding. It sounds weird, but because I'm focused so much on the detail. Yes. Because these weddings are so detail like oriented. I mean they've they've spent five hundred thousand dollars on whatever, you know. Right, right. And I'm I'm photographing it. But I um vertical mostly for publication. But uh, yeah, I I'm really loving sort of just throwing one lens in you know in, in, on a on a 35 millimeter camera which mm -hmm. actually is more it works more for horizontal or sorry uh yeah horizontal and i'm loving just running around with one lens one camera yeah. and just forcing myself to just you know start to really sort of compose and it's funny for me to say that after shooting for 18 years mm -hmm. but sometimes i lose sight of that and i kind of come back to that and it's just this constant like don't forget about moments don't forget about people don't forget about you know composing your images a little bit more yes. and not always just be on the go, you yeah. know? And that's the cool thing about film is that that allows me to slow down a little bit uh -huh. because you're obviously, you know, these cameras are slower, number one, yeah. and it's super expensive. I mean, every shot you take is like $2 and 50 cents. Yeah. I remember you saying that before. Yeah. Yeah. So with digital, it's just like, you know, and just keep taking pictures. Just for a moment for the photographers out there, they're probably dying to know what lens you're using, what camera, what, what yeah. generally are you? So for 35 millimeter cameras, I'm using a 35 millimeter lens, mm -hmm. which is more for moments and, and horizontal shots. And then uh, for my film cameras, I'm most, or the contacts, uh, medium format is a contact 645. Okay. And that is, um, the negative is just a lot bigger. The hmm. quality is a lot bigger. It gives it more of like a lifestyle type magazine sort of look uh -huh. um so i'm shooting mostly with that camera about 80 percent of the time actually and what about uh light i mean i know that light really affects how we see color too how, yes. how do you view light yeah you know i i'm not into a crazy super bright bright light yeah. i like a little bit more mood but it still needs to be soft and airy so i try to look for lighting that is a lot more i would say soft 
I feel like soft lighting really complements people's skin and people's faces. Um, as long as I have a little bit of that catch light to make sure that people look alive, then yeah. that's really sort of what I'm looking for. But um, I try to stay away from really contrasty lighting situations. Can, can you say more about that? Yeah. So like, for example, you know, instead of photographing a couple at a specific time, like let's say noon or one or two, we know that that obviously, if the sun is out, um, it's going to have more of a contrast to mm -hmm. it. So I avoid photographing, you know, maybe let's say a bride and a groom during that time. And I'll wait when the light is softer. So it might be like at sunset or, but you know what? Sometimes I don't have control. Sometimes yeah. it's like, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, in those cases, I might bring them into sort of shade underneath a tree or I don't know, behind a building or something like that to be able to complement these people's faces. Cause mm. I don't know. It, it really depends on the on the subject on the people mm -hmm. but um i want to make sure that you know there isn't any funky shadows on their faces we want to make these brides look sure. soft and beautiful yeah. and you know all of that so that's really important you know i'm also thinking with all of this all of these elements combined that we're talking about that um you're using that essentially to control how people feel right mm -hmm. when they look like i mean obviously you're drawing the eye to a certain place and mm -hmm. it's all emotion are you super aware or is it more just intrinsic for you or is it more intuitive now for you i think it is more intuitive but it is really important to yes to look at that and to make sure that people are feeling comfortable uh -huh. and a lot of it has to do where i place my subjects you know are they going to feel distracted because there's so many people around for example you know so i like to kind of take them off for a second, give them a little breather yeah. um, so that they're present because that's going to show in the photo. It's super important. And when we get the photos back, you know, I'm sometimes kicking myself going, darn it, you know, we should have done this. We could have done that. But I learned from those scenarios, you know, but yes, how you make people feel, especially in front of a camera mm -hmm. is very, is super, super important because it is all transparent. And a lot of that is just, you know, as a photographer, What's your personality like? You know, my I, when I'm photographing these people, I'm not aggressive. I don't yell. I don't rush them through the process. <laughs> right. But I also am not slow about it either. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be constant communication with them. Uh -huh. There should never be as, you know, when I'm pulling a bride and groom out, let's say, for example, for sunset photos, and it's just me and assistant and videographer, whoever, I'm constantly talking to them. And it should always flow. And... When there's silence, something's wrong. Oh, really? And okay. that's how I feel. And I feel like when there's silence, people kind of freeze, you know, because they feel like, well, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Like, you know, and, and I'm, if I, and this happens all the time, sometimes my cameras, you know, stop working. Yeah. And, and you have to like, oh, <laughs> inside yeah. your head, you're like, but you're got to keep and them I'm calm. Walking. Oh, totally. And I'm like walking, <laughs> you know, to the spot and I'm looking at my assistant, like, you know, right. And, and but still <laughs> talking it through them and keep them calm, keep them calm and yeah. just chatting, you know, oh, the, you know, your reception was so beautiful and I love your, you know, your cousin is so sweet, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Making things up. But I'm constantly you know, talking, even if there is an issue with equipment or yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, it's a whole like having to switch gears, but still making sure it's flawless throughout the whole process. What about those moments when, you know, the composition, the lighting, the, 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 the way they're feeling, the emotion that's coming out when you know, this is a shot, you must have those moments where it's like, this is it. Oh yeah. Oh, I have those moments. Yeah. There's at least, you know, two moments like that at a wedding. And, and you want, that, right? You're looking for that, aren't you? The whole night oh, in a yeah. sense? Totally. Totally. Yeah. It's almost like we're searching for that one. And a lot of it actually is, um, it's pretty consistent. It's usually sort of going to be the bride and groom walking down the aisle. And I think a lot of it is because, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a moment that is um, so natural and organic and it's fun to see you know, their family in the background standing up and clapping or throwing petals or whatever it is. And I know it sounds cliche, but re really like that's, I thrive off of those moments because uh -huh. I know that there's certain things that are going to happen and I have to be ready for that. Like they kiss usually almost a hundred percent of the time when the bride and groom are walking down the aisle, uh -huh. they usually kiss at the very end yeah. and they hug and they embrace or they cry or they take a moment. Um, and that's the moment that like I'm waiting for pretty much almost all day. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of things like, you know, the father daughter dance or the, the first dance for the bride and groom. If mm -hmm. there's a hora, you know, at this, uh, at a Jewish wedding, like those are always so fun because mm -hmm. people are just having so much fun, uh, laughing and, you know, those are all so genuine. You can never really, you can never recreate moments like that. And those are moments I thrive to get throughout the day. You know, I also want to talk about the business side a little bit more. I, I remember last time we started to talk about 
um, social media. And uh-huh. I believe that, and I know uh, a, a couple of planners I've spoken to who have learned a lot from you about that. Talk about how you're, you're doing it yourself. Yeah. You're up to something like around 400,000 Instagram followers. Now you handle all this yourself, don't you? I do. Like, yeah. How do you feel? What do you think when you think about strategy for social media? You know, a lot of it is obviously what you show. And as a photographer, you know, I'm very lucky because I, I, I mean, it's all visual for me and, and I'm the strongest at that, you know, yeah. photography. So what I struggle with is the text and what I put into the, the context oh, of put the it image. In context, yes. Yeah. And the reason I struggle with that, and that's and that's sort of become a job to me because yeah. I obsess. I feel that way. Yeah. yeah. And I and I obsess over how people are going to read or take away what I have to say. Mm-hmm. I, I never want to come across showy or I did this mm-hmm. and you didn't. You know, it, it's just I don't know. I see so much of that. And instead, I kind of throw it back at like, um, you know, how beautiful it was because this wedding planner made it this way. It's almost like I kind of like and I've changed gears a little bit over the last year or two um, because I don't want to talk about myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to. Well, it speaks for itself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and I see that a lot. And I think I don't know some advice, some piece of advice, I think, for uh, younger and newer photographers is to not talk so much about yourself on Instagram. Like, yes. Oh, please. you know, yeah. I know. I think any, everybody should. And I see that a lot still and yeah. I, I'm surprised, but, um, but I shy away from that. I, I just don't like that, you know? So, um, you know, there is a strategy to it and I've thought about hiring somebody to do my social media, but you know, we almost got to the contract and it's expensive. I mean, I know it's, I've looked into this. Oh, yeah. I've had some help. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten some quotes, but it was like, when I got a quote, it was $4,500 a month. Oh my God. And, and, you know, but I was going to like one of the best and, you sure. know, they do amazing work, but I'm like, man, besides the money part, mm-hmm. like I still felt like it wasn't necessarily going to be a hundred percent me. I was going to say, your per- where's your personality? Yeah, yeah your personality kind of disappears uh, in, in in a way. And I just didn't want to disconnect. You know, I, I, mm. I, I still book weddings off of Instagram. And I still get direct messages from Instagram from brides that are, you know, potentially going to... You gonna... must get a ton. How, are you... Are you responding directly to I the am. DMs? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So in, I guess if we talk a little bit about business, how I handle my business is really sort of I am in the direct contact with my client or potential client. So yes. I do all the emails. I talk to them. I have every phone call with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I direct message them back on Instagram or yeah. wherever um, or respond back to them. We're texting constantly. And then I take photos. And then the rest, all the editing, all the album design, all the reprint orders, all of that, I have a staff that does that. Right. So I don't want to mess with that because I am I know that I'm not the best at editing or color correcting. Um, and it, it's funny because what I've noticed is when you give so much more attention to your clients, like on a text or DM or even as simple as Instagram, mm-hmm. they end up spending more money. They yeah. end up really connecting more on a human level. You know, if they can have access to me at any moment... Um, and I have very, obs- and I'll say this, very, very obsessed uh, clients. <laughs> um, you know, they, they obsess over everything photography. Example, you know, they feel like they're not skinny enough. I mean, it is, it, I don't know you why. You must get driven crazy a little bit. Yeah. But you know, it's funny. It's, I can actually, I can handle it. I actually sort of become friends with them. And before, like I wouldn't, before I wouldn't give them my cell phone number. I didn't want to talk to them. But, you know, uh. I didn't, I mean, I, not to say that I didn't want to talk to him. I just didn't want. Well, you could be inundated with these oh, calls. Yeah. So you're acting like a therapist. Like planners talk about this. Mindy on the yeah. show talked a lot about that. Mm-hmm. So there's an aspect of that where. Yeah. Because, you know, it's in the end, it's the photos that they're going to relive, I guess, the mm-hmm. wedding by. And and if they don't look good or they don't feel good through the process, yeah. it's to them, it's it's you don't want them to regret it. You know, like, oh, I should have hired another photographer well i'm thinking too you know obviously this helps affect the quality for you of what you're doing but there's also creating these legacy clients you know Mm -hmm. they feel close to you they feel bonded you know they trust you because of this right and then you start doing everything that they're doing yeah and it's funny you say that because i have a client right now we did four pre-wedding shoots that which are sort of like an engagement session Mm -hmm. around the world four of them they're asian they're having a 700 person wedding uh in a week and a half two weeks and then they have another wedding you know, so they could have hired four, five, six different photographers. I mean, they're very wealthy. But I think what it, she was trying to test me the first time we did a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. And I think it was that she wanted to make sure we connected. And we instantly connected. And we're in contact. I mean, daily. She's texting me. 
Hey, what do you think about my dress? Hey, oh my gosh, I just got my veil. Like, do you like this detail? Do you not? You know, and it's like I'm sort of holding her hand in a way because she knows that the photos are so important to her. Yeah. And I've allowed myself to give that much time to her. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I feel like we've become friends. And so now she's hiring me for every single event all over the world. I yeah. mean, it's crazy. Probably It could potentially be uh, my highest paid job uh, client, I should say, um, in my 18 years of my career. You know, th it's, this is so interesting timing. I've got a wedding in Florida with my music company mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'll have a certain degree of this too. This is the most contact I've ever had with a client it happens to be the groom's father. Mm -hmm. He loves music and he's got really good ideas and it's gotten to the point where, I mean, same thing, we're texting and, and, you know, being very open with each other and, and also talking about how much we're enjoying working together and it's not that I, I wasn't trying to upsell or anything, but it has led to significantly more mm -hmm. that we're going to do for his son's wedding. Yeah. And I'm feeling more inspired and it's allowing me to be more creative because he's trusting more. This is, it's just such an interesting process yeah. for me working with this particular guy, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Give him that more, give him attention, give him a little bit more of that, you know, walking, uh, holding hands and walking him through the process Yeah. or, um, and and you're right. I mean, I've noticed that over the last couple of years, and I I feel like I'm I'm doing that a lot more. And honestly, it's been like it's more enjoyable. Yeah, isn't it, it is. It really is. Yeah. And before, like I said before, I would sort of shy away from that. Yeah, me too. I just want to like yeah. book, 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 to get the exactly. work done. Yeah. But also too, and maybe you too. But also back then, I was shooting like 50 weddings a year. You know, so it was how many like, are you doing now? I do 20. That must even then, feel so much better. So much better. But, but even, even that's then, a lot. Well, I mean, yes, geez, because Jose, these man. events are, you know, as you know, they're three, four days each. Yeah, so once you, yeah. and you're traveling all and over we're the traveling, place. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, I have such an amazing team and staff. Mm. You know, and they, I, I can send them to go shoot the rehearsal dinner, uh -huh. and I'll just come to the wedding now. So nice. I've I've been able to really let go a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and people like my clients are totally cool with that. I was actually kind of afraid to bring that up to them and say, hey, you can have my second shooter shoot the brunch, the welcome and the rehearsal or whatever. But just to give them as an option, a lot of times they still want me, but that is an option. And I was afraid to bring that up because I didn't want them to think that I was like pushing them away. But it's a trust factor. And look, I think at this level, the clients who, who are affording this level, they understand because mm -hmm. they themselves are doing it in their businesses totally. or whatever. They get it. Yeah, exactly. But I had never done that. Yeah. And I started doing that about literally just a year and a half ago, letting go a little bit more. Mm. And it's funny because I feel like almost they respect you a little bit more in mm. a way because they're like, or, or when I get on site. You know, it'll be more like, okay, it's, it's, it's real. It's official. Yeah. Jose is here, you know? And I actually have overheard that at weddings. So it's, it's nice. It's very, it's, it's a great place to be for sure. What do you do for fun outside of photography? <laughs> um, I get that a lot. So I work a lot. <laughs> But, you know, I live in Solvang, California. Yeah, and I, I think I remember talking. I, I was there because I interviewed Mindy, Mindy Rice, Rice at her home. She's not, yeah, she's that amazing. That was one of the most beautiful drives, and it's so peaceful and quiet out there. I, I'm is. envious. Uh, well, I grew up there, and I'm so lucky that I live there now. But all my siblings are there. Oh, really? Yeah, all of them? All of them. I have two wow. brothers and two sisters. And now, yeah. you know, I've got, I don't even know how many, I mean, I've got like 12 nieces and nephews. <laughs> and so we hang, we actually really love to entertain. Yeah. So we have them over a lot. We, you know, we, we have a lot of friends and stuff over. Um, Joel and I, you know, we travel uh, mm -hmm. also, obviously for weddings, but we'll, um, we just love just lounging around, you know, on. Uh, so, and you'll add be, days to the trip. We will, or we'll just, you know, forget photography for a moment and just yeah. disconnect you know but we're really into we just bought a property so we're really into um just making this property our dream home you know and in so solving you're saying it's in santinez yeah santinez, so it's like yeah. yeah 10 minutes away but it's uh you know rolling hills and we're lo we're loving right now like because we're really into design mm -hmm. even just like designing like in interior design and um and so like landscape design and so we're really loving just sort of you know sketching out ideas and and uh, sounds, like, sounds like you're kind of settling down a little a bit. little bit yeah. yeah i mean this is my this is my dream home yeah. yeah you know i grew up on a ranch yeah and then um and then we ended up moving well with my parents to a neighborhood um and then joel and i uh we were when we were living in solving we were in a neighborhood which mm -hmm. is you know great and there's neighbors you know four four feet away <laughs> yeah um and so i've always wanted to have that that dream ranch i guess if yeah. you will yeah and these last couple of years have been amazing in business so we're like hey what are we gonna do with our money well yeah you know I mean, let's yeah, come on you gotta give yourself something oh, back. totally You've yeah been busting ass oh I mean, for geez. sure yeah so you know that's we're putting um a lot of our time into sort of building this dream home really not not 
physically, but, you know, making it ours. Uh, and yeah, settling in a little bit. I mean, we've been together for whew, maybe, what, 16 years or so? Jeez. Yeah. What's it like being married? I mean, you're both photographers. We are both photographers. What is that yeah. like? Is Joel, there any sense of competition at all or anything <laughs> like that? We've gone through that for sure. He actually started as a filmmaker, so a videographer mm -hmm. with weddings. And then for the last seven years, he's been doing photography. I think at the very beginning, there was definitely some kind of competitive vibes. The good news is that actually, well, when he wanted a transition into photography, mm -hmm. I was sort of wanting him to be part of the team. But he was like, no. Yeah. I want to do my thing and yeah. you do your thing. Uh, I think that's important. Yeah. And I'm really happy that, um, cause I, I love working with my family. Like I have my cousin who works with me, my oh. sister-in-law, my sister, um, you know, actually my sister is my studio manager and she's worked with me for oh, many geez. years. Yeah. Okay. I love working with people that I really feel like, you know, I just, I love so much and I, and we connect and we don't even have to talk cause they know me so well, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, so I wanted him to work with me in my business and so now in retrospect thank god that that didn't happen and he did his own thing because now the good news is that you know he's so busy now in his own business that uh -huh. he's flying around doing weddings on his own with his own team and i am as well but my clients now ask for him and they'll say hey can he can joel be a second shooter for me for my wedding you be the main photographer and it's great because i'm able to charge a lot more because now you have this bundle yeah you know so it's it's actually helped a lot with business. So he'll do maybe like this year he did seven weddings with me as a second shooter. Like he photographed Nick Jonas. Oh, like he did. He did all the getting ready. Oh, oh for getting him. ready. Okay. And then he was there with the guys and he photographed Justin. Like I actually didn't really photograph Justin alone at all. He did all that, you know. And uh, and he, and the cool thing is that you know he can handle these very stressful situations with these people that have been photographed so much. Yeah. Right. You know. So I, when I have him on a job, I feel like I feel a sense of relief because I know and trust that he's going to get it. So yeah, it's it's been really awesome working together. But like I said, there definitely is a little competition. But I, it, but it's not bad competition. You know, it's yeah, it's it's actually it's sort of fun. Well, it sounds like it's coming from a place of love instead of anything else. Exactly. You know? and you know, we get into little little bickering situations yeah. here and there. You know, a, a, around the corner under our breath. <laughs> But we know to keep it professional, you know, sometimes I won't see him for four or five uh, hours or so at a wedding. Mm -hmm. So he's doing his own thing with the guys yeah. and all that. And I'm doing my own thing with my, with the bride and all that and, and my assistant. So it's, it's nice. It's a good little combination. Well, and you all are now speaking together too. Like here at Engage, you both spoke together. Correct. Yeah. We, we taught, we spoke, this was the second time we've actually done. What was done. the topic? It was actually, um, the topic was business and how funny you say this with uh with this emotion of how you make people feel yes uh that was actually our title um so we talked about about that and how you make you know folks feel the bride and groom even when you pick up the phone mm. you know and 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 knowing that it is a is an it's an experience mm -hmm. and how are you gonna have them experience the best day of their life with us being there through the process and you're also doing, I know you're doing workshops personally. Can you tell me something about yeah, that? Yeah. So actually, we sort of stopped doing workshops. We haven't done a workshop in about three years. Oh, um, okay. I, well, two years, I guess, two and a half. And as you know, and as you mentioned, we've been doing workshops for the last, you know, 12 or so years prior to when we stopped. But it was always at um, a hacienda in Mexico. So it was constantly there, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. every year. But we've decided to stop because we feel like it's time to sort of, uh, refreshing up the curriculum because everyone was sort of everyone, meaning these photographers that teach workshops were doing the same thing. You know, it was just like three days of an experience, but we would do class time and then shoot a tape, shoot a table, uh, photograph a model, then photograph an imitation. It was like, we were sort of running through what a wedding would be like. Yes. And everyone that was doing these workshops were, was doing the same thing. Hmm. And I just felt like, you know what, we need to stop. Like we need to take a breather, Hmm. back back away for a second and how are we going to make this different so um we're still working on it and we're trying to find you know the best venues around so you'll be back then oh yeah oh yeah i already have a waiting list i i mean i love teaching i think it's like so gratifying and it's so amazing to see how you know just feeding information to these photographers has also helped just elevate the business elevate the you know the photography world and we're able to charge a lot more because i push that on them you know so collectively i feel like we've done we've done that so what are you looking forward to coming up soon 
Um, you know, I'm actually looking forward to just chilling out and resting. This year has been super busy. So um, January, we're going to go on an awesome vacation and just chill. Where with are you going? No cameras. Where are you going? We're going to go to the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, to this amazing uh, little private island. So that, that'll be really fun. Um, we're going to Thailand as well in February. Which just, part are you going to go to Bangkok We're going to go to uh, Bangkok first, and then we're going to go to Phuket. And yeah. I have actually, then after that little mini vacation, we're, we have a wedding with Lynn Easton uh, out there, which is like a four or five day wedding. Oh, nice. um, so that'll be really cool. Yeah, no, but I, I, I really look forward to just enjoying our home. I literally, we just bought it a month ago. Well, we closed a month ago, uh, escrow. So it's it's now time to like really just make it ours. So I'm excited to just be home and wake up and see the sunset. And this, I mean, literally, we have 20 acres, so it's like our neighbors are you know <laughs> way out there. I can like cover it with my thumb. And so I just I just want to chill out and just enjoy. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know. So my last question for you, maybe you know, in a sense, you've you've answered a good part of it, but. How at this point in your life, how do you define success for yourself? Yeah, I think you asked me this question last time. Well, it's been two years. It See, has I been wonder two years. <laughs> if it's evolved at all yeah. in any way. You know, I think success. Okay, um, that's a really, really. I mean, you hard know, question. You, could, you could change it to it is. You could change it to happiness. I mean, anything you want. But I'm just wondering yeah. how you how you now kind of look from an, uh, a a top view down on mm-hmm. on where you're at in your life now with your career, your personal life, all of it coming yeah. together. You know, I think in my in in so if we talk about business, I feel a lot more at ease with um, clients trusting me more than ever, mm. and and and, I, and I'm trying to figure out why, and I m- it might be because I feel maybe more confident, uh-huh. and I know that as artists, that could be a hard thing to be confident about, you know, what it is that you're producing for your client in mm-hmm. this case, you know. So I feel like I've mastered something. Um, and that these people want, and I feel like they trust me and I'm more confident about the deliverables, which allows me to just be more at ease. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's, enjoy it and right? enjoy it. Yeah. Cause before it was just this rat race of, you know, emotions too. like, are they going to like it? Are they not? Da, da, da. You know, and I would beat myself up, you know, cause sometimes if I send the photos to the client and I don't hear from them, mm-hmm. I don't expect anybody to, you know, to write a long email thanking me and saying how fabulous everything was. But I, you know, I, I do like to hear from my clients. And if I don't hear from them, I beat myself up. Like I didn't do a good job or is no news, good news, you know, that whole deal. But some people, like half of the people that I deliver my images to, mm-hmm. they will never email me back telling me that, but then they'll pick up the phone in six months and say, Hey, we have a 40th birthday party. We're yeah, doing. right. And there you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I feel, I guess in, in to, to sort of wrap it up, it, I just feel a lot more at ease and that uh-huh. allows me to just just enjoy more the process where yeah. before I wasn't enjoying it as much, I think. Mm. Oh God, I have struggled so much <laughs> through that myself and I, yeah. uh, myself, all, all of my, all my different voices <laughs> in my head. Yeah. No, but I get that. And I think that's a real goal to strive for and, and to start to reach. I, I, yeah, I get you mm-hmm. just starting to feel comfortable within yourself exactly. and your body and, yeah. and kind of trusting not not that there's a fate or destiny, right? But that, you mm-hmm. know, the path is unfolding in the right way, right? Exactly, yeah. And it's interesting talking about that, you know, 18 years down the road. You know, I've done this for 18 years. So, man, like, it took that long, you know, 17, 18 years or whatever to yeah. feel that. And so, going into 2020, uh-huh. um, I probably feel the most confident in as being a businessman. Nice. Um, and also an artist. So, it's just, it's it's good. I'm... I feel like they say this every year, but every year's amazing and it gets uh-huh. better and better and better. Yeah. I just have to remember to stop a little bit and just, just enjoy smell it, the right, roses. Right. Just enjoy just it. Just slow down. Yeah. And feel the gratefulness. Exactly. Yeah, and gratitude. also celebrate um, accomplishments, you know, to, and I've learned that over the last couple of years, yeah. you know, getting these amazing weddings and being published in people or what, or, or landing a very big job mm-hmm. or landing amazing people, you know, clients, a uh, client from Malaysia. That has booked us literally for, you know, all these events could be the biggest client ever to stop and enjoy that and literally just, you know, take it all in and be grateful. So I'm, I'm learning to do that a little bit more for sure. Mm. Well, wow. I really enjoyed this. This has been great. This flew by like five it, minutes. I know. It really know. did. It really did. But we'll do it again next year, 2021. We're going to do it yes. once a year. Yes. Thank you, man. Awesome. This has been great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Jose Villa. 
be sure to check out his website at josevia.com. His social media handles are the same, Jose Villa. And you could also find all of this and more in the show notes at our website at theweddingbiz.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, which I'm sure you did, please, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Let them know that the show exists and that Jose has been on twice. Would also love it if you could give us top reviews wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to listen to our follow on segment that comes out every Wednesday called The Next Level in which I have a guest co-host, and together we talk about some of the highlights of the interview in a way that will help you raise your own business to the next level. And I'm excited to say that this week's guest co-host to talk about Jose's part two will be Lynn Easton, who we all know, planner and designer who works worldwide. She's worked with Jose numerous times, and Lynn always has great insight. She's been on the show twice before. She's really great. Actually, three times. So I want to mention next week's guest. It's going to be Matthew Robbins and his business partner, Luis Otoyo, with Robbins Otoya Planning and Design Company based in New York City and Cartagena, Colombia, doing events worldwide. And if you have not yet subscribed to The Wedding Biz, do so. It's free on your podcast app so you know when the next show comes out. And follow us on social media, especially Instagram at The Wedding Biz. And finally, I want to thank today's sponsor, Kushner Entertainment, who has absolutely incredible singers and rhythm sections in their bands, also DJs, custom acts. The key about Kushner Entertainment is how they custom curate the music and entertainment experience for every single client. It is not just sending out an entertainment act that does a show like they do every other week. Every single event is custom curated. So be sure to check out Kushner Entertainment. And we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Biz.